All right. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. So um, to give you a little background, I work uh, at the FDA, obviously, in Cedar for the electronic submissions team. And we're going to talk about ECTV submissions today. So the first thing I'd like to do is just kind of get some live feedback from the audience on how you would characterize your ability to submit an ANDA in ECTV format. Uh, so we have this poll uh, online for everybody that's, that's on the Adobe Connect. And obviously, we have all of you in the room. Um, so for those of you who would say that you are uh, an experienced expert, raise your hand. All right. I'm at the right meeting, man. OK. Uh, for those of you that would say you're pretty good at it, raise your hand. OK. That's good. Uh, somebody else in my company handles the ECTD. That's usually how it is. Yeah. That's about right. Uh, I'm a beginner. All right. And then uh, wait, what, what is ECTD? <laughs> All right. Great. All right. So what we're going to cover today is uh, important submission deadlines um, around the submission of uh, you know, your electronic ANDA, uh, as well as study data. We're also going to talk about preparing to submit electronically, things that um, it would be helpful to think about as you're starting to pull together your regulatory content. And then gateway notifications, and where you may see issues when you're submitting your ANDA to the FDA. So deadlines for required ECTD submissions. Uh, the first one has already come and gone. And uh, that is that all submissions to ANDAs need to be in ECTD format. And I'm happy to report back to you all that 99.6%, may even be a little bit higher, of uh, all submissions to, uh, to ANDAs have been coming in in ECTD format. So uh, congratulations. Everyone uh, has gotten the message there and has uh, figured out how to submit an ECTD. There's another deadline coming up this year, May 5th, and that is for drug master files. So just as ANDAs, and you might also be aware that NDAs and DLAs had to start submitting an ECTD last year, coming up in May, uh, the DMF holders are required to submit an ECTD. And the reason I bring it up here is because many ANDAs reference drug master files. And when you're working with uh, your drug master fire holder, you might want to ask them, hey, um, you know, the deadline's coming up for drug master files uh, to be submitting in ECTD format. Is your company uh, ready to be able to do that? Because if they can't, uh, that could potentially cause issues in the review of your ANDA. If you're referencing a drug master file and they're unable uh, to maybe respond to a request for further information about their DMF. So again, um, don't send paper or non-ECTD submissions after the ECTD uh, deadlines. And uh, a little bit, that's that caution sign, just what I was talking about uh, before, where even though your ANDA might be in ECTD format, or you might be all ready to set, send in your ANDA in ECTD format, think about any DMF that you Exemptions uh, are outlined in the guidance. And of course, submissions that do not adhere to the requirements that are stated in the guidance are subject uh, to not be filed or received. So you can find out all the information on the deadlines. You can find out, uh, you can go take a look at what it says in the guidance, um, any other important notices related to ECTD on FDA's ECTD website link is right there for you. And just in case there are any master file holders who might be here or might be watching the webinar, um, or maybe you could even you know, pass information 
uh, to master file holders that you're working with, FDA has a website specifically for master file holders. So what else is, is covered in the guidance that's hitting with these deadlines? You must use fillable forms. And when we talk about fillable forms in the ECTD guidance, all we're talking about is, for example, with the ANDA, is the 356H form. That is the form that we're, that we're talking about there. DMFs don't even have a form yet at this point. FDA is working on one for them. It'll be out at some point next year. Gateway must be used if your submission is 10 gigabytes or less. Most submissions that we see that come in fit that criteria gigabytes or less. And you must use the correct lifecycle operators. So meaning if you send in a document uh, in your first sequence and then you come back with your second sequence and you're making an update to that document, uh, there's what's called an ECTD replace lifecycle operator. You're supposed to tag that updated document with. When it comes to standardized study data in electronic format, there's a deadline around that as well as it comes to does. So the requirement there is that studies that start after December 17, 2016, they must be in standardized format for ANDA submissions. And you can go to the Study Data Standards Resources page to get all the information that you need to find out about that. As far as how uh, this will be enforced, you can read about it in the Technical Rejection Criteria for Study Data. That's on the ECTD website also look in the specifications for ECTD validation criteria. That is all the uh, validations that FDA runs to make sure that an ECTD is valid. As far as where can you find the study data guidance that talks about the need for uh, standardized uh, study data in electronic format, uh, right here in this hyperlink called the guidance. And if you have questions on the study data portion of things, study data guidance, submitting study data, uh, anything related to that, you can contact FDA's eData team. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about preparing to submit electronically and, and things that you should think about as you're, as you're beginning the process. So number one, definitely become familiar with the ECTD website. It has information like important dates and deadlines. It has a quick link section. This is where you can quickly access the ECTD guidance, the ECTD submission standards, uh, the FDA data standards catalog. It also has a notices section. Uh, this is where if we're doing something new with acknowledgments, it'll be um, posted up there. Um, if there's anything new to the guidance, we'll post something under that notices section. And then finally, at the bottom of the ECTD landing page, uh, there's a section there about submit using ECTD uh, to learn. And there's a page there about learning how to submit your application using ECTD, how to get a gateway account. So that's very useful as well for people that have not submitted an ECTD. Maybe you haven't used the gateway before. So as you are pulling together your regulatory content for your ANDA submission. We want you to think about um, the common technical document structure, the CTD structure. This is the uh, five modules, right? There's a module one, two, three, four, five. And then within each module, there are standardized section headings. So it's really good and it's important to be familiar with this hierarchy as you're creating your ANDA application. And we have some resources here with hyperlinks which will give you all the headings. So you can look at that later on. It's called the Comprehensive Table of Contents, Headings, and Hierarchy. And there's also a, a document called M4, Organization of the Common Technical Document. File format and PDF specifications. So these are two things that you want to be aware of as you're pulling together your content as well. 
So the file format specifications, what that does is it tells you, depending on what section of the CTD you're putting files in, it tells you what file types FDA is expecting. Whether FDA expects a PDF file to be within a particular section, or whether they expect maybe an XPT file, or maybe this is a section where you're allowed to submit a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. So this hyperlink here will bring you to that guide so you can see. There's also the PDF specifications. This is the document that gets into if your document is five pages or longer, you need to provide a table of contents and bookmarks and hyperlinks. It talks about font sizes and so forth. This is a very important document to be familiar with before you start creating the PDF files that you're working on. We also know that sometimes you're working with um, you know, other companies uh, to pull together some of these PDF files. So it's important that uh, you work with your partners to let them know about these PDF specifications. Give it to them ahead of time. That way, when they turn in their deliverable to you, it's already in the correct format. A little bit more on, on study data. So if your submission is going to include study data, uh, you want to make sure you go to the study data for submission to CEDAR and CBER's website. There's some key resources there. Uh, this is the, another link to the study data guidance. Another link to the technical rejection criteria for study data. There's also a study data technical conformance guide. You're probably also already familiar with OGD's website uh, where they have the ANDA forms and submission requirements there. So once you've prepared your regulatory content to send into FDA, right, it's time to think about uh, the technical aspect of submitting it. So number one, you're going to need an application number for your ANDA. Right? You're going to need that. So go ahead and request that pre-assigned and application number. If you go to the ECTD website, there's a link there. You can go ahead and do it. You don't need to wait till the last minute. The ANDA number is, if you get the ANDA number six months ahead of time, you don't have to worry about it expiring. It's there. You can go get it six months ahead of time if you like. Go ahead and register for the electronic submission gateway account. Sometimes the process goes very smoothly. You might get it in a few weeks. Other times, you might hit uh, some obstacles in the way. So instead of being, you know, kind of, you know, stressed at the last minute and trying to work through any possible issues that arise when you're trying to get your gateway account at the last minute, go ahead and apply for it six months ahead of time. Apply for it a year ahead of time. When you submit that uh, request to get an ESG account, they will ask you to submit a test ECTD sequence. There can be dummy data in that, in that sequence. As long as it's a valid ECTD structure, you'll be able to go ahead and get that uh, ESG account. Here's a screenshot from our website. We have links there through the ECTD page. Uh, if you find that uh, you're trying to find some of these links and you're having any trouble, you can always contact uh, our team at ESUB at fda.hhs.gov. Uh, the address is on, in the slide deck. Now that you, uh, you have your submission already there, you want to generate it into ECTD format. And you can do that uh, by publishing the content via an ECTD publishing tool or using an ECTD tool vendor. And that ECTD publishing tool, what it's going to do is it's going to capture the administrative information about your product, about your company, it's going to map your content that you've created in those PDF files, maybe in the Word document or an Excel file or your study data files. It's going to map those into the proper CTD sections. And then finally, the software is going to generate that final submission into ECTD format, including all the required technical files and the folder structure that you need. So now you have your ECTD submission created. You can either Send it directly into the FDA for the review to happen, or as an optional step, you can validate it on your own side first. So you can uh, download validation software. You 
could also ask our eSub team to take a look at your submission. We would consider it a sample submission. What we'll do is we'll validate it through our validation tool, and we'll also take a look at it to see how the submission looks in FDA's ECTD viewer. And if we see anything that's standing out that's incorrect, we'll let you know about it. And this here is just some information on our ECTD webpage there. But you could contact us at eSub-testing if you're interested in sending in a sample submission. And then finally, when it's time to send in your submission for real to the review division, most likely going to be sending this in through the gateway. And the process here is you send it to ESG, and you're going to get back an acknowledgment. We call it the first acknowledgment. It's also called the message delivery notification. Then after that, ESG is going to deliver the ECTD sequence over to the review division. So in this case, they're delivering it over to CEDAR. Once it's delivered to CEDAR, CEDAR says, great, we have it, and a second acknowledgment goes out to you. After CEDAR has the submission, so after you get the second acknowledgment back, this is when CEDAR will run validation on it. This is when the ECTD validation runs in the submission to make sure there are no high errors. If the validation fails, you're going to get a technical rejection notice. If the validation passes, you're going to get that successful uh, notice back. And now the review division has it, right? In the case of OGD, if it's a new ANDA, it's the division of filing review that'll have it. And where can issues occur? Three places. It can happen with the first acknowledgement, right? Maybe you, you send in your submission through ESG, and ESG doesn't get it, so you don't get a first acknowledgement. The second place is when CEDAR validates your submission. If it fails validation, well, now you're going to get a notice back. And the third place is the review division. Maybe it passed validation, the review division has it, and now the division of filing review is looking at it, and they see that there are key pieces of information that are missing, in which case they'll send you a letter to let you know what the deficiencies are. So in summary, we talked about the important submission deadlines. Uh, the ANDAs already should be coming in an ECTD. DMFs will need to be an ECTD starting May 5th. We talked about uh, things to think about when you're submitting an ECTD, which is utilizing FDA's website early, aligning your content with the CTD structure, that's common technical document structure, and get the ESG account early. And then finally, where submission issues can occur when you're sending it into FDA. There's that transmission to FDA to the ESG, there's validation that happens on the CEDAR side, and then finally, when the division of filing review gets it and they have a person looking at the contents, they may see something that's a problem and then contact you. So that is it. Thank you very much.